Welcome back everyone to yet another episode and in today's video we'll be taking a look at two pairs of shoes from an exciting newcomer from India, Bridland Shoes. Coming up! And we are back, finally, and to make up for the absence we have not one but two pairs of shoes from different ranges from, as I said, a newcomer in the Goodyear welted industry and family coming from India, Bridland Shoemaker. So, a little bit of backstory. I met them for the first time in the London Super Trunk Show in London in May 2022. And uh, they've been around for a couple more years. Uh, 2019, I think they started. And they're developing their own range, even though shoemaking runs in their family. So what they wanted to do is to create a few, uh, you know, affordable, good value and good quality uh, Goodyear welted shoes and some other ranges uh, with inspiration, all generally from the British industry and the British classics. So that's how Bridland was born. I met the owners uh, there in the trunk show. Uh, really, really friendly, passionate about their shoes, passionate to talk about shoes and how to improve. Uh, it was a great experience. And we had a little bit of a chat and they were very kind to send me a, two pairs of shoes from different ranges that we will talk about in the close-up. And actually, I did a giveaway of these uh, through my blog. I really recommend you read the, the written article as well. And as far as Brindling goes, they are in the entry level of prices and depending on the range you're going for. They have uh, about four I would say, two are the main ones. They have a really, really affordable Blake line at about 90, 100 US. They have a bit more casual collection and then you go to the main ones which is, you know, the main collection and there's also the founders collection, the founders edition. And the, those two are the ones that we're going to focus on today at about 265 and about 320 US dollars for what they offer or what they say they offer. It's a pretty good value and we are here to find out more about that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in the close up. We're going to go through all the details with, uh, with a comb and I'm going to even compare them some futures to uh, a pair of shoes that I have made by hand. So you can explore and understand maybe some of them a little better. And after that, we're going to talk about availability, again, the pricing and the sizing, some issues, some positives that I have to say. Uh, so I look forward to talk to you about all these. Let's go. Let's begin with the unboxing. Uh, both boxes pretty much are the same and I don't see any noticeable differences in the unboxing experience. It comes with a really nice sturdy box uh, with a blue color and a branded logo on the top. The box is really good, really strong and will protect your shoes much better than Crockett and Jones, for example. Opening it up, there is even this uh, sort of foam separator to protect your shoes on the top and even has space for your finger so you can pull it easier. Nice little touch. There is also a small uh, shoehorn made of wood. Very nice addition, uh, simple. Uh, works. A pair of shoelaces, extra pair of shoelaces, always a good touch, especially this price point. And then there is uh, two shoe bags uh, in this uh, lovely color and lovely material, branded by Bridland with a nice sort of texture and how you call it? Tartan, I think. Uh, I don't like very much the, the strings which are they're, they're nice, they're made out of leather, but I feel that you can just easily rip them or lose them inside. And the rest is just, you know, some uh, foam and paper to protect your shoes during transport. But let's move on, because uh, you're here for the main menu of the day. And I want to begin with uh, the Black Oxford. This is a classic Black Capto Oxford. And, uh, I mean, there's not really much to say about the design. Capto here, as classic as it gets. Five eyelets, as classic as it gets. There is no, you know, interesting or uh, innovative thing to do right here, like, a, I don't know, a swan neck or a Balmoral. This is a classic Capto Oxford in a very English style. And that's what exactly they were going for. Uh, at the back, 
you have a dog tail stitching uh, on the back seam and of course you have leather sole which we will talk about more later so in this kind of designs there's not really much to talk about uh, it is it is a black capital oxford um, my first uh, look you know i spotted a few things that i want to talk about and uh, we will talk about overall the material feels uh, feels good we will see how it uh, you know it uh, holds up there were a few points where i was uh, hoping to talk with you about and uh, I think it's time to do that after the other details. Of course, fully lined shoes, very good job. Uh, when I look at uh, the, you know, the clicking and the closing of the uppers, uh, it's uh, for this price point, it's pretty good. There are some areas where I can still see some glue and I can see still some stitching, uh, some threads here and there. Uh, but for the price point, it is pretty good. The sole is uh, lovely, it's not JR or something like that, I think it's uh, Oak Park Tan by Bakers, if I'm not mistaken. And the shoe has a little bit of uh, features uh, here and there uh, that uh, you would probably find in more expensive models, like even the fudging here in some cases, uh, or uh, the way they finish the edges on the top and the bottom of the sole. So that's about how the shoe is and how it uh, looks. Now let's talk about the actual details. Uh, overall, the stitching is pretty good. There are some differences. Well, this is the main line. There are some differences with the founder's line. Uh, this one has, you know, uh, average good stitching. It's Goodyear welted without uh, gemming. So there's no, uh, how do you say, canvas rib. And they make a, an actual channel on the insole. And I can't see yet in this light uh, about uh, say much about the heel. It looks it looks good. It has a, a rubber insert and actually has uh, from the top lift. It also has underneath a full uh, layer of uh, rubber. Overall, pretty good. I, I can see the finishing. Uh, it is uh, it is good for the price point. Definitely looks better than Mermin's quality. Now, importantly, I want to talk about a few topics here as well. For example, I don't know how visible it is on camera. Uh, there is a bit of a dent here uh, in the arch, uh, which uh, with my experience as a bespoke shoemaker, I would say that uh, this looks like a, an arch uh, supports a problem or uh, how do you say it, uh, during the lasting. So I would pay more attention there. And when I look at them from the top, I can also feel some, not dense exactly, but some kind of inconsistency. It's not even at these parts of the area. At the front, you have a toe stiffener, which gives it structure and shape, and it's hard. And you also, generally in shoemaking, have here and here on the sides, you also have some stiffener. And how these two connect to each other is really important because if they're not flush or flush enough, uh, then there might be a gap. And uh, I think that's what happens in this case. Not something that you will, that would bother you structurally or uh, it, it is a problem, but uh, something that, you know, to mention for them to improve in the future. Uh, overall, pretty good. Um, I can see another couple of things that I want to talk about, uh, uh, but I will let them after the Founders Edition and overall a good shoe uh, the proportions are, are okay on uh, on this one maybe a bit of uh, the design this part looks a bit uh, higher than usual uh, so it makes it look a bit inconsistent maybe in any case this is the main line and uh, this one is on the z last it's a new last that they, they developed and uh, i find it quite british looking i find it more appealing uh, than uh, the other one actually and um, overall this is uh, more than a decent shoe for for the price point so this was the main line let's go to the founders line which is more expensive and has more expensive futures let's say and here it is this is from the founders edition founders range and uh, it is an austerity bro so it is an oxford with a wingtip design but without 
the broguing, so there are no patch holes. It imitates the austerity brogue design, uh, but uh, you know, it's just stitched. And uh, this one costs about 315 US dollars, so it's 50 dollars more than the previous one. And uh, what can I say? Uh, overall, I was a little bit uh, skeptical about the quality of the clicking. There are some points, for example, here, there are some smudges and I haven't even used the shoes or worn them. And here in this area around the facing, uh, you know, there is a bit of creasing uh, unnecessarily in both uh, sides. So, you know, it can happen. It doesn't make any difference, but the difference in color, for example, here, it's not aesthetically pleasing, especially for a higher range. The last is different. We are this time on uh, the I can't pronounce it well, it's the Deutsch last, and uh, it, uh, they, they told me it's a bit of a soft square last, but it's, it is really, really soft, uh, I, I would say. Uh, the stitching is, density seems higher here, definitely. There is a bit more polishing around uh, the edges as well. Uh, of course, they put a Triumph toe plate, uh, very nice and flush uh, on the bottom, and there is, something that I initially thought is a fiddleback waist. And you can see, you know, how it curves inside and makes a nice uh, reach, like a, like a heel uh, meeting in the middle. However, looking at it, uh, I feel that it's not a proper fiddleback and it's just uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, it could be a shank, it could be something that they place here just to give it this shape. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, I will show you after both shoes what I think the differences are. And uh, overall, that's about it. I mean, decent leather, uh, the sole looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of this last. It looks a little bit uh, flat. Five eyelets, uh, overall the proportions, the same thing that I mentioned uh, with uh, the black Oxford. But now I want to get to the really, let's say, important stuff that comes from my perspective as a bespoke shoemaker or training. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this shoe away. I'm going to keep just one. And I am going to bring my second pair of bespoke shoes that I've made myself. Uh, they still need some finishing. And we're going to compare some differences. So a very important aspect of a shoe uh, for both it's it's his stability. So when you put it down You want it to be stable and not wiggle exactly like this uh, This means two things uh, one that the ball This part of the foot the wider part of the foot here. It's not exactly level So, you know, it's round so it wiggles a lot and also Hopefully you can see that there is a big gap here when I place them down at the heel, which means the heel is not level. Maybe you can see it here, that this part is also, uh, you know, lengthier, so this causes some instability. And also the toe spring is quite high, I can put, can put all my, like my finger down there, my big finger under, and um, I generally think that they should pay a bit more attention to trying to, to balance the shoe better. Because if the shoe is not balanced, then maybe your foot will not be balanced, maybe you have arch problems. And uh, let me show you the difference. So these are my bespoke shoes. I still haven't finished them completely, uh, but this is what a real fiddleback looks like, uh, which I've covered by hand. And also, like, the shoe doesn't wiggle, you see, because I spent a lot of time balancing the shoe. And same here, there is virtually no gap at the bottom because we do every layer, we check the balance of the shoe. And uh, what else? Shape. The shape of a bespoke shoe here, you see how it curves nicely, follows the last, and it is not extended over the outsole. Here, on the other hand, it is almost the same, and uh, it's pretty much almost the same or 
a bit more and I would prefer to see it a bit closer without so much of a gap here in lasting and like a bit a bit more of the outsole protruding uh, it is a bit too close at the moment uh, these are no, these are just design elements that uh, I'm thinking about uh, and of course purely aesthetical um, but uh, I, I would think that it would help a lot with the curve and let's look at the bottom again so you can see how much more these curves in both sides and uh, this one it, it doesn't have so much curve here at the front uh, it is something that I would like to see them improve or at least work on a last with such futures. And for the last part that I would like to talk about is uh, the heel block. So this is a size 8 and it really depends uh, on a lot of things. But I would say that a heel block on this one is about 7.5 centimeters, which is 3, three inches. And this one, on the other hand, which is based on my bespoke last, is an eight and a half, you would say. So this one is about 6.8 centimeters. So you can see the difference between these two. Uh, it is a little bit, this one is uh, longer and it makes a difference in the proportions of the shoe. Also makes it uh, more different and difficult to, to get it even right. And uh, lastly, which I forgot, is this part here. For a size 8, uh, generally, uh, we want the back of your foot where it touches your foot to be around 6, uh, it depends, 6.1, 6.2 centimeters. Always depends. And that one was about 6.7, if I'm not mistaken while mine is about 6.3 uh, this uh, could cause a difference you know when you actually wear the shoe and the difference between the instep here which is higher and the back of the shoe and how the fit is it can create a bit of a problematic fitting and uh, I would uh, definitely check this again overall uh, both shoes are good. Uh, I was more impressed uh, with the value of the Black Oxford. This one is good too, but I would say it needs some improvement. For example, there are some loose threads also here and there, which you could just burn them off. And um, there was an issue also with the Black Oxford on the back, which I just remember, which is here. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Uh, the way the the back here folds to towards the uh, the e, the inner lining. It's it just it's crooked and it's it's just not correct. It will not cause any problem, nothing structurally, but for the sake of looking good when there is so strong competition in the industry, uh, it is definitely something that I would recommend taking a look at. Uh, generally, quality control. So these are. The shoes that I have to show you today. Let's take a look at them again. We have the Black Oxford from the main line, which uh, uh, for its overall value and quality, I was impressed, even though it has some things that could be better. And this one is from the Founders line, which has some upgraded features. And uh, But I don't think you, could, you should spend more money just because it has what it appears to be a fiddleback. Uh, I think they need to improve their consistency if they're going to offer it for more money. Of course, uh, something else would be to test them in real life for a longer period of time to see if the leather on these, for example, are uh, is better and it ages better. But uh, overall, as you see, the, the main thing that I would think about is the balance and the lasting and taking care and a good look at the actual last shapes of the shoes, which are the basis for everything. Oof, that was a, that was a long close-up, probably the longest I've ever done. And uh, let's move on to close things up. And that was the close-up, and I hope you got a nice, good overview of all the features and differences between the main line and the founder's line. And now that we went through all of those, it's time for me to uh, talk about sizing and availability 
but also make a nice you know conclusion about some of the things that uh, I think were good uh, and things that could be improved in the future. So let's begin with the easier stuff. Uh, as I said in the intro, the main line, depending on what you get, of course, shoes or boots, etc. Uh, at the time of uh, filming this video was, I think, about 265 US dollars, while the Founders Edition uh, was a little bit more expensive at, I think, around 315, give or take, depending on the exchange rate. So about a 50 US dollar difference between those two for a bit of extra futures. Uh, so it all comes down to what you're looking for. Uh, if you don't care about, let's say, a fiddleback waist, uh, which offers no practical function, it's just for aesthetics, then why not take the founder's line? But if you're looking, you know, for a for a good, everyday, solid dress shoe, then why not go for this? However, most importantly, uh, we need to talk about fit, because looks and quality matters not if the shoe doesn't fit you well. And uh, there is the point where I have uh, a bit of criticism about uh, Bridland, constructive criticism that I hope they improve in the future. Um, when I initially approached them about the sizing, uh, they told me that, they really told me that the shoes are large. Now, while that may be possible for maybe India or those parts of the world where they mainly retail, um, for me, they they were quite uh, I would say narrow, so they often told me to size down half from my usual UK eight or US nine D, uh, for both lasts actually. Uh, however, just for tes for testing, I told them you know what, send me one in seven and a half and one in eight, so I can spot sort of the differences even if the, if they're different lasts. So that's what we did, and I think uh, this one was an eight, the founders uh, edition while this one, the Black Oxford uh, from the main line, was uh, a seven and a half. Now, uh, I would say that they, at least for Europeans, probably Americans, given my experience, they will run narrow. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle to get my feet into this one in size eight, my regular size, but it was an okay experience. Uh, it was not the best fit I've ever had, but it was uh, manageable. However, uh, when I tried to fit into these, uh, size seven and a half, it was absolutely impossible. I had to struggle to get my foot in, and the V gap here was, uh, it was really, really bad. I, it was impossible for me to wear them for, uh, for a longer period of time. And uh, that, made me, you know, realize that I should at least get a size eight, my regular size in both shoes. I would have to try this one on an eight and a half, uh, how narrow it was to see if I can get a comfortable fit. But overall, at least on the this one, which is the Doge last, uh, I would take at least a regular, your regular size. So be careful, talk with them, share with them some, uh, uh, you know, models and sizes that uh, fit you well because unfortunately they don't have a return policy, so you cannot get your money back. Uh, to be fair, I'm not sure how legal this is, uh, at least in Europe, but you always will get either an exchange or some kind of uh, store credit. Of course, they will replace them if uh, there is any functional problem, you know, or a structural problem. And that's about that. Now, uh, let's focus a little bit quickly on the positives first. I should also mention that you can pretty much only get these shoes online from their own website, which is pretty good, pretty functional, simple, uh, works well, and checkout is easy. Uh, so it's their only channel of selling at the moment. I think there is uh, some kind of uh, retail shop somewhere in Italy, but don't quote me on that. And now back on the pros. Uh, so overall, if you started and you don't have a big experience in shoes and you want something nice and functional, um, that will look pretty good, then you can't go wrong with this. Uh, when I started, I got a Loke 1880. Uh, it's a classic Capital Oxford, and I thought it looked beautiful and amazing and classy. And then I went to a more Spanish and uh, Italian type of style, and I saw the differences. So if I started collecting again, I, I, I would think that these are pretty nice looking. 
and the price is good the overall quality is is pretty good they have a variety of uh, classic and some non-classic shoes a uh, variety of leathers different soles uh, there there is a lot of customization in a way or at least choice and of course if you're a fan of uh, either from Allen Edmonds or towards British shoemaking like Loke, Chini etc you know classics these will most likely appeal to you and I should also mention that the owner and well the staff they're really passionate they're really friendly and I think you will have a great experience with them and also uh, they would take uh, constructive criticism like very well and by heart um, uh, as you will see from the stuff that I will tell you in the cons section or the things to be improved they they invited me to to test again their shoes in a year as they will try to improve those little things which brings us to the things that could be improved um, first of all I would really say that they need to figure out a way to nail down uh, the fit and I think it comes down overall to the last I'm not a huge fan of the last it feels quite wide and it lacks curves in a lot of points um, of course that is only personal uh, preference uh, there are a few more details that I notice the more I keep the shoes uh, for example at the front uh, you know uh, there is a big difference as you saw in the close-up with the toe and the outsole being pushed inside and having a quite a big gap in there and then again the balance of the shoe is both shoes are completely imbalanced now it's not something that is very easy to do uh, especially in these price points and even in higher end shoes you will probably notice that there's something going on around the heel and the ball balance and the clicking on some of the shoes could be could be better as I haven't used them I just put them on and there is also some kind of uh, maybe grain break here but uh, it is in areas that nobody will notice other than you and uh, the heel is generally the proportions I find them a little bigger than they should be for this last um, like I showed you maybe in the close-up this is about seven or seven and a half uh, centimeters I forgot and it's it, it's a bit longer than, uh, than I'm used to and the overall proportion of the shoe uh, for this size of shoe which is a seven and a half this part here at the heel uh, generally it's it's quite high I would say it's almost half a centimeter higher than the let's say the industry standard or at least bespoke standard this part is quite higher as well and it creates a, a, a the proportions are a little bit strange I would say and Generally, the last feels a bit flat for people that might be more into curvier Spanish, Italian, French style. And overall, uh, if I have to see, you know, between these two, um, I, at this moment, unless I got, you know, a sample that's not the best there, I, I would just pretty much, I enjoy this last, the Z last a bit more. And... Uh, I would say the overall quality for the price matches it better uh, at least from the founders line that I, I received and lastly one thing that is extremely difficult is to to get things like the you know the outsole these parts of the outsole to be completely even and follow the last without any bumps this happens when you sand it uh, usually with a machine in the industry no with a machine in the industry and you can feel that it's a little bit bumpier it's also important you will not notice but you know uh, it is it is visible if you have some experience overall it's a it's a pretty good shoe very solid for a very solid price run by people that uh, seem to care and I'm very excited to see how they take this kind of uh, criticism and advice and what happens with them in the future and uh, overall good experience uh, congratulations to the people that uh, won these shoes and I would like to hear more about your thoughts about maybe the things you saw from uh, Bridland before if you have interaction with them maybe you have a good or a bad experience maybe you were in the trunk show or maybe you're thinking about pulling the trigger in the end I believe that if you find your fit you will be happy
and uh, yeah that's about it let me know what you think in the comments uh, of course if you're new to the channel I would really really appreciate it if you th leave a thumbs up you know leave a like subscribe and I'll be back with way way more content as you can see but before you go stay a few more seconds for the bad dad joke of the week <laughs> so what is red and smells like paint <laughs> Red paint. <laughs> Who comes up with this? Thank you for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.